Hey, um, I've got a problem with my Jeep. Uh, let's, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this particular problem. I uh, went to Moab and the Rubicon Trail this summer, and my Jeep took uh, quite a bit of abuse. Um, problem I see right now is that my lower control arms got mangled pretty bad. There, let me show you what I mean. Here is my front lower control arm on the driver's side. See how it's spread out here? And my frame mounts are even bent over. This one's pretty bad. It's actually rubbing on the control arm there. Front mounts are bent as well. I need to hammer them out or weld on some new ones. But the control arm being splayed out like that, I, I don't really like. If you look back here on the back, you can see this one's really bad. Um, see, it's bent from the side. Uh, the yeah, mounting brackets on the frame are actually bent in as well. So, I'm going to replace all my lower control arms. Um, I got some, bought some new ones, uh, new used ones I guess, uh, they're in really good shape, got them off of eBay for $15 a piece, so it was a pretty good deal, um, but I, I don't want the same sort of thing to happen again, so I'm going to beef them up a little bit, and I'm not running any lift kit on my Jeep, so um, I don't need any longer ones or anything so the factory ones are doing fine but I just wanted to beef them up a little bit make them a little bit less prone to bending and whatnot so I'm gonna show you what I plan to do uh, let me take you back to the garage okay here are my uh, replacement control arms that I got off of eBay you can see um, they're in pretty good shape a little bit of mud on them. Um, they're in a really, actually, really good shape, except for this one. This one's got uh, it's bent up a little bit, but I'm going to take a hammer to it, straighten it out before I make my modifications. So that's what they look like before I start. And this is what they look like after I beef it up. Uh, I just took a piece of uh, steel, um, three inch wide plate, and welded it to the control arm. And I just ran a couple of beads along here. I didn't need to weld the whole thing solid, so I just put some short welds on there to keep from burning through this metal. I did the other side. Um, and what I'm going to do is, because this end here fits in between the ears on the frame, I'm going to have to trim this corner a little bit so it'll fit up in the frame. So uh, I'll show you what, what that looks like here in a few minutes. But right now I'm going to uh, weld the plates on all these other the other three control arms and I'll show you the process there. I'm gonna sand this edge here and get a good welding surface take all the paint off all the way down to the ends clean them up a little bit and then uh, cut cut the plate 17 inches long which is what I figured was the length there um, so let me uh, show you that. Alright, so I laid my tape measure on here. There's the end of the control arm there. Come down here and it's right at 17 inches. So I'll go over to my saw, find my steel, whatever I, whatever I did with it. Alright, I got my piece of. Uh, steel hooked up in my Milwaukee metal cutting saw 
Got the measurement 17 inches. I don't know if I can show you this, but. So now I'll get ready to cut it. Here we go. Alright, now I'm going to uh, take the uh, flap wheel sander and clean these all up. It's kind of loud, so put some hearing protection on. Okay, got all these cleaned up and got the flap wheel sander on there. Knocked all the paint off all these. Um, should be in good shape to weld on now. Um, this one, I've got to get uh, friendly with it with a hammer and beat these back to where they should be. Um, so let me go do that and be back in a minute. Okay, I pounded this one back into shape it's uh this edge over, over here is a little high i think i'm gonna grind it a little bit down with the sander uh just to give it a little bit better place to weld on um it's kind of a little thin on that edge so i might burn through if i try to weld that really thin so i'm gonna grind it down a little bit um all right so i've got one piece of steel cut to length. You can see how much overlap I've got. A little bit short of the end there, a little bit short of the end there. Um, I don't need to go all the way to the ends. Um, I just want to box it. Box it in, make it a lot stronger, and uh, give it give some place for the rocks to actually slide along instead of digging in into those uh, channels and making them bend out or in or sideways uh, like the other ones were. So you can see I've got quite a gap. That's finger width there. So what I'm going to do is take a big C-clamp here, clamp it right in the center, draw it down, then put a bead on each side to hold that in place and then clamp it a little bit as I go towards the end so I get it flush against this control arm run a bead all along there as I clamp it. And then when I get them all welded on, I'll come in and, and like I said, trim this edge so that uh, it has clearance to fit inside the frame member. So, um, need to knock the mill scale and the rust inhibitor off of these pieces, but uh, I need to cut two more 17 inch pieces. So. I'm going to go do that now on the saw. So I guess the next question is uh, going to be, what thickness metal are you using to box these in? Well, it's the thickness of metal that I had laying around in the garage. That's, uh, that's the thickness. Um, 
I don't know if you guys ever used one of these. These are a, a digital readout caliper. Um, it's kind of neat. Um, you can read out in decimal inches in fractions of an inch. So you can uh, like 1 16th, 5 64ths, 7 64ths. So it's pretty neat. Um, also hit the button again and it shows you in millimeters what the readout is and then back to decimal. Um, so let's see how thick this is. Point one three, which is five thirty seconds. Take another measurement here. Do 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 eighth inch. So that's just what I happen to have laying around in my uh, shed um, from all one of the other projects I've been working on. So. 8th inch, which is not all that thick, but probably just as thicker, thicker than the factory control arm, so um, we'll see. Um, I'll put them on, do some rock crawling with the Jeep, and see what happens. If they get all mangled up, might have to break down and buy some real control arms, but the ones I've got on there now, I bought the Jeep at 30,000 miles. I've got about 85,000 miles on it now. So, quite a few trails um, and survived the Moab, all the Moab trails and Rubicon Trail. So, not too bad. All right, now we've got to uh, clean up the scale off of all of these pieces of uh, steel so I can get a good welding service. I'm not going to clean up both sides, just one. Um, but I guess I should clean up both sides because I need to paint them so that they won't rust. But uh, let me get to that. try one of these things. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, one of those scotch bright pads. See how that works. a lot better. Maybe my sandy wheels, flap wheels getting a little dull.
lost half my Pepsis. Okay, got the first one ready to weld. Got it clamped on there. You can see I've got it flush with the center of the control arm there. Got it evenly spaced on the ends. Got it evenly spaced side to side. Um, yep, plenty of room to run a bead in there. So I'll run a bead, short bead here in the center, just like I did here. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, then clamp it here, run a short bead on each side, and clamp it here to bring in these, uh, bring the plate in closer to the control arm here on the end. Run another bead, then clamp it here at the very end, here to pull this end down and to curve it around the top of that, run a bead right down in there for the same, same ends, same side. So, let's get to running some welds. Okay, two down, two to go. Is that side welded up? This side welded up. Like I said, I need to trim this down a little bit. I'll get the uh, sawzall or flap disc or something to cut that off. Maybe just a regular old hard grinding wheel uh, so it'll sit in there properly. But that's what I'm doing. So, two down, two to go. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I uh, got all my control arms welded up. And now I need to uh, narrow the metal right there where it fits into the frame mounts um, so there won't be any rubbing on it. So, just grinding it down a little bit. Doesn't look pretty, but. I don't care, it's going to get scratched up and dra drug over the rocks. So, just need to narrow it down right here. But grinding sure is taking a long time to do that. So, maybe I uh, might try the. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I might try. Um, don't know if I can get a sawzall in there or a jigsaw. A jigsaw will probably hit that piece down below, so I'm not sure that's going to work. So I guess grinding is the only option I've got. So it's taking a long time.
All right, all cleaned up, ready for some paint. Almost looks too pretty to paint, doesn't it? That shiny metal. Woo, doggies. We'll see how it holds up. Um, that metal's thicker than the uh, control arms. At the, so hopefully it'll hold up pretty good. So let me squirt them with some paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead with camo colored paint and put them uh, bed liner on the world because I didn't clean those up very well. So I figured the bed liner would adhere better. But I uh, put some camo olive grab on there. That's it.